guys coming and taking the time out of your day for the purpose of learning. So um, thank you for doing that. It's nice to see that familiar faces for everybody. And, and my goal today, this is, I'm not going to be giving some boring presentation where everyone's quiet. I'd love for this to be as interactive as possible, make it feel like a group and I'll do my the best I can to make this easy, fun and valuable for everybody. Um, introduction from my end, my name is Christian Saab. I'm the owner of CPG Recruitment Inc. We are a recruiting company. At the end of the day, um, we specialize in matchmaking and headhunting and helping businesses find the right staff. At the same time, we are a franchise ourselves. And um, it dawned upon me um, over the last couple weeks um, that the nature of work that we do is very is almost identical to the nature of work that you do. And um, I have a lot of friends of mine that I've built relationships with franchise consultants and brokers um, that, you know, we, we, we're always hearing the same complaints of, you know, um, I got these tire kickers or I get them to go through a uh, uh, interview process or an introduction and everything seems to go well and then they just ghost and disappear. So I imagine everybody has these similar scenarios, right? Yes. Feel free yeah. to shout. You're just, you get, no one has to be muted. Everyone, there's going to be a lot of moments where I'm just going to get everyone to say, yes, I agree. I'm with you. <laughs> right. So, um, you know, um, Craig, you've been very, you've, you've taken the responsibility of being the social guy already. <laughs> you've made my job easier. So maybe, maybe share with you some, some complaints, some surprises that you see day in and day out when you're trying to introduce people to a brand or a brand to a person, you know, that extends the process from being a simple, yes, we put two people together and it's done within a month. And now it's a six month thing, you know, share with me some of your pain points. Uh, well, I've got one that's just coming up on a year anniversary and uh, it, it's not, he, he was going to quit his job and he's in the, he practices law and the company he was with extended his contract and they needed him to finish up this case. So it's been lingering for just about a year now. So um, I've still stayed in touch with him. And yeah. uh, everything else is the same thing everybody else goes through. You know, people fall off. Um, I've restructured my emails that go out to my clients and my phone calls and texts. And um, I think that's a little bit better. And so, and I'm getting involved with the AI and social media a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to help in the long run. I just started with that. And we all face the same, same, uh, obstacles, I guess. My biggest thing is the lead generation and contact rate. Um, it seems like it's dropped from what it used to be like. It's just people are harder to get a hold of. Um, they, uh, I don't think they, they don't even do texts anymore. They are, are on other social media platforms. So um, it's always changing. So I'm always trying to keep up with everything. And I think yeah. you have to, uh, to stay focused on it and change. So I'm always, I'm always changing, updating, trying to get better at everything. And I imagine people on the call just shout out a yes. And you know, you could relate to Craig, correct? He's not the only one here who has these scenarios that is like that, correct? Yes. Now, sure. specifically for today, um, there's, there's two parts to your job is one generating leads to, to meet a candidate, a, a client, Right. But then now, once we meet them, there's a whole obstacle of we're dealing with them and, and we meet them. And now it's a year of dealing with them. It's six months, it's four months, or they never end up making a decision or, you know, we could, that's what I want to address today. Okay. Um, you know that? Cause I'm sure we all have pain points with once we finally meet someone that says, I'm interested in, in getting in on a business. Now it's like, well, oh my God, why can't they make up their mind on something? Right? Is that do we do we see that yeah. scenario? Yeah. Yeah. We here have clients that is like, yep, yeah, I can't seem to just get a decision made. There, we all yeah. have that problem. Yeah. Yes, we do. So again, I want to stick to the theme of an extra five minutes will save you months and headache. And and to make this relatable, again, I'm a recruiting company. I'm not a franchise broker, but from my perspective. The business that you guys are calling brands, ours is our companies that need staff. And the people you deal with are people that are joining an opportunity and a new change in career and life. 
For me, it's the job seekers. Now, the nature of work that I do is the headhunting side. So I've got to match a person to a job. And why don't we call, you know, the nature of work that you guys do is, is you're matching people to a new job. Fair? Can we all be on the same page there? Yes. So, so we've, we've mastered it that um, when our customers come to us and say, I'm looking for a specific type of person, we've mastered the art of finding them that specific type of person. And once they meet within one interview, they know they're going to work together and it's the right fit. Okay. So I'm going to indulge on the strategies. Is it, is it fair for you guys to say that, that the nature of my business and the nature of your business is very relatable and that oh, yes. you yeah. relatable fair. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. So, um, the very first step in all of this is the very first tip. Tip number one is hyper focusing on the brand. In my case, it's the company. In your case, it's the brands you're going to represent. Now, um, we'll do a little bit of, of question and answer, but um, does anyone here want to volunteer on, because I know already I get the phone calls from franchise brokers and, and you all ask me the same things when you want to learn about my brain. Okay, so I'm curious, does anyone want to volunteer themselves when they reach out to a brand to get to know them? Maybe they you could share some of the questions that you ask them. Does anyone want to talk here? Jane, can I call you out, Jane? Jane Stein, can I use you for this one? Yes, I have to turn off my mic. Perfect. Believe it or not, I don't often reach out to the brand by telephone. I I, I actually look through the FDD, okay. I read through the marketing materials, and then I email if I have like two specific questions. But my questions are always, um, <clears throat> it wouldn't be the case in your brand, because I know the answer. But in brands, it's often, what percentage of your owners are semi-absentee? Because I have a lot of semi-absentee buyers and everybody says it can be done semi-absentee and then you get invalidation and there really isn't anybody. So um, that's one question I like to ask. I also want to know specifically, um, you know, I, w I won't show a brand without an item 19. So I typically will look for that first. Um, and then a question might be if I need to reach out, it's like it will be territory specific. It will be you know, talk to me about this territory. Could you send me a map? Anyway, so it's probably not useful for your, sorry, you called on the wrong person. <laughs> and I imagine because those are the questions that I get when, when brokers call me or when I reach out to a broker and they're asking me very operational questions. They're asking me, tell me about the model, tell me about the territories. And it seems to be very, um, they're transactional questions. Okay. Um, I'll get to the point, to my point. No one has ever asked me, tell me a little bit about the cultures, the culture that you have in your business and the type of people that are in your business. Okay. No one's ever said, um, no one's ever asked me, um, you know, it's okay to ask, you know, what's the, what's the demographic? Is it a younger team? Is it a more mature team? Right? No one's ever asked me, you know, um, tell me the story as to how this started and the, the, and even the type of person, and we're, we, we talk about ideal candidates, to who, who is winning in your business? Who's a personality that I'd like to meet and get to know? Really hyper-focusing, okay? So I'll give you examples with how when I onboard a brand new company, a company calls me and says, Christian, I need staff. Sure, they're going to give me the qualifications for the job. I'm looking for an engineer with, with, and I'll pay them this much salary, and this is the experience, the, the transactional questions, right? The very first thing I do before I recruit for them is I tell them, I need to come out and see you. I need to see the environment. I need to see your building. I need to see your parking lot. I need to see everything about your business. What is it like being in one of your stores? What is it like being in your business? Really understanding to the core exactly what is actually happening in that company and a lot of my customers and a lot of the brands that you'll be dealing with they're going to be very confused when you want to pry at to, at to the details of their business they're extremely confused they're like i don't understand you know why why do you need to know all this information and it's like well how am i going to find you the next person you're going to partner with essentially if i don't know who you are it's like dating right you know we're maybe a few of us are married over here we have a relationship, you know, we have relationships in our life. We're picky on that aspect, but for some reason, when it comes to work and business, we're not picky with it. 
we have our own taste. We like certain foods that we like to have. We like certain uh, tasks, things that we like to enjoy. And we're, when we're dating, we're very obvious in what it is that it is about us. But for some reason in work, for either filling a position, companies are very hesitant to open their doors, say, this is who we are, and this is why we're hiring. And same thing for franchise brands is this is who we are as a culture, okay? So um, very, I would say 90% of my time is spent on culture and getting to know the people, knowing the names of people in an organization and what role they play, the different people there. The reason why this is important is because you need to understand that brand inside and out, just like I need to understand the company inside and out in order to be able to represent them well, okay? It takes another level of when I know their culture, it's, for example, let's say, Craig, I'm going to point you out here again. Okay. Craig, let's say you and I are best friends. Okay, we're best friends. Let's say I'm married, you're single. Okay? We've been best friends for 10 years. I know everything about you. All right? And then I meet a lovely lady, and I say, oh, my God, you would be a perfect match for Craig. Because I know him as a person. I know him of who he is. That irrelevant of her tastes and likes or whatever i just know we all, we've all had that how many people have you met in your life where you're like you have to meet my friend dot 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 because you just know they'll get along fair does, does everyone here have that had that moment in their life yes yeah. where the moment you meet someone fresh you're like i gotta introduce you to my friend or i gotta introduce you to a colleague you guys are gonna get along fair yes that all comes from actually knowing someone to the core okay very, 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 very important. I think that's that's um, the biggest step you can take of knowing the brand. Now, step number two is now you have to do the opposite. You have to know the, now the client to the core. Both parties, both got two to this, okay? Um, so let me shift now. I'm dealing with a company. I know them to the core. I know the story of the owner. I know what it took from them to get from the beginning all the way to the end i know all their locations the type of people the audience and i know the vibe now that they don't even need to tell me who their ideal candidate is because i could feel it i could see it because i asked all these very detailed questions i went and paid myself a visit so now it's time i'm gonna go and start working for this brand for example right and now i start meeting candidates as a franchise broker or from my end as a recruiter and one, it's not one comes first than the other. It's, it's you're gonna, you may meet a candidate first or you may meet the, the business first, but you're going to do the same thing. Now, when, when an investor, when someone applies or you get a lead, when someone here gets a lead, what, what's some of the discovery questions that you ask? Who can I, who can someone volunteer themselves to stay? When I first meet a lead and I call them saying, nice to meet you, does anyone want to share what their discovery process is like? I will. Go for it. Tell me, Greg, you're the man. Yeah. Um, mine's, a little, mine's the same that we all got trained on, but over the years, um, I have found out that people buy on feelings and emotions. So I try to get them emotionally involved with the brand, number one. And yep. I found that that's a lot easier. The, if they buy it mentally, they'll pay for it financially. Mm -hmm. And when I'm matching them up, um, I, I explain to them what I do, and right at the end of it, I say, I'm like the matchmaker. I set you up on the first date because I want them to picture that in their mind, and that's what's going to happen when you meet the franchisor. Okay. And you have to have these discussions because it's part of the process. And I try to keep my people um, in, in line to give them what, the, what to expect. And when you talk to the franchisor, um, he's got a, he's going to check with you. He's going to, uh, talk with you and you're going to have a casual conversation, but it's got to be a good fit for both. So I guess I'm going back to the original thing. Everything that I do with my clients, I try to get them emotionally involved. And give me some examples of questions. We just, we just meet, I, I applied on your site and you got me as a lead and we get on a phone right now and. You give, you give me that exact spiel that you just said, and then now you need to get to know me. You've never met me before. What are some questions that you're going to ask me? I'm going to ask me. Yeah. I'm going to ask you what you're doing now yeah. and your goals, what your goals are, and go right down the list as far as financial goals. I'm going to have a casual conversation on them. And typically, I've got an advantage point because I will use 
a franchise that's not in our, our books, but it's one I can relate to because it was my neighbor 35 years ago. So I asked my clients, have you ever heard of Cold Stone Creamery ice cream? And I, everybody says yes. And I says, well, they were my neighbors here in Chandler. And going back 35 years, I watched them get started in their kitchen and in the garage, their first location in Tempe. And I watched them build. And now fast forward 35 years, they are all over. And when you, when you invest in a franchise, you're investing in a process that's already been proven. That's why you have franchise fees. That's why you have royalties because you're going in a partnership with someone and you want to make sure that it's going to work for both people. It's got to be a good fit for both. So, and I'll, I'll and you, you know, there's other stuff, but I don't want to take all your time. No, no, you bring up an exact a perfect point. And the question is, how is it going to be perfect for both? How is it going to be perfect for both? Right. And the message that I want to share with you is when you get to know the business very, very, very well to a whole other level outside of a standard information sheet. And when you get to know a person well, so now if we're talking on the the candidate that you have, I, you guys call them clients in the beginning, which a little bit, it confuses me a little bit because a client <laughs> is someone who pays me. <laughs> so I like calling them candidates. A client is someone, you, I got money in my bank account, so you're a client now. <laughs> but beforehand, I like to call them candidates, so forgive me. But the candidate that you're dealing with so for us, what we do now, let's say we start, we start meeting, we start putting up postings. We're trying to fill this position for this company, right? What we do is we intentionally make it difficult for the candidate intentionally. Okay. Because remember, we have a lot of tire kickers, just like in my business, just like in your business, we have a lot of people that are like, ah, oh, you know, I, I got drunk over the weekend. I got a fancy idea. So I applied and, and I feel ambitious all of a sudden, but maybe I changed my mind. I don't know. So I intentionally put processes in place and that can be as simple as one extra meeting or one extra interview. Okay. Setting the tone of an interview and really the core here is to understand what are they actually trying to accomplish in their life? When I meet a job seeker and they're applying, whether it could be, it could be someone applying for a forklift driver position. I don't care. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. I ask them, why is, why does there need to be a change in your life? And I genuinely, like I said, for, forget, forget the nonsense, forget the logistics. I'm just talking one person to another. Why is there a change in your life right now? What's the core behind it all? Is it a scheduling thing? Is it a money thing? Is it an ambition thing? What, what is it? And really finding that core as to why finding out their why is very important. Okay. We sometimes get caught up with the whole transaction of if, if I meet someone and I say, oh, do you have this experience? Yes. Do you have that experience? Yes. Do you have this experience? Perfect. Okay, you want to do this job? Sure, great. That's very, very low level. That's what most people do. For me, I, I get into the experience. I see if you have a certain skill set, but then I'm asking why. Why the change in your life? What's wrong today is a great question to ask. What is wrong with your life today that you're, if everything was perfect, if, ever, if your day was so perfect, you would never look anywhere else. Fair? Can we all agree with that? Even for us personally in our own life, if everything was perfect, why would we change so when someone is coming to you, they're looking for a change and your job is to find out the real reason why. Okay. And when you find out why you then from there could couple that with, okay, well, tell me your skill sets, tell me your lifestyle. And based on that, why if someone says, well, I want to make a change because I want to travel a little bit more. Okay. Perfect. Or I want to make that change because I want to retire out of my business and be able to continue a lifestyle. And I want to move to, from New York to Florida. Whatever. There may be all kinds of reasons. And those reasons are the most important reasons. That's your driving factor. That's your closing factor, actually. That's what's going to close a deal. Because if I came to you and you got me to open up and I told you exactly, I'm looking for an opportunity that will change my life in this way. Forget the money side. Forget the proven concept side. It, forget all that. It's I came to you, I said, I want to make $250,000 a year running a business off of a computer and, and being able to not be trapped in a city and being able to move. If you came to me and said, Christian, I found you exactly what we were talking about. There's a pretty good chance if I was being, if you got me to really open up and really say, if, if you find me this, I will drop everything that I'm doing to take it on. I, there's probably a 99% chance we're going to move forward. 
Can we all agree with that? Yes. Yeah. So really understand, find that one Achilles heel. And some people, the people that don't have it, guess what? Don't waste your time with them. If they're giving you a weak answer, they're probably just, you saved yourself the headache, right? And that's where I said that first sentence that I had posted was, the first five, the extra five minutes will save you a month. What is me asking a personal question you take? It takes five minutes. Let me just ask you a personal question. Let's, let's, let's get to know each other. And before I start working with you and presenting brands, I really want to get to know you because I'm not going to send you a brand unless I know exactly who you are as a person and what you and your family are trying to accomplish. If it is someone who has a spouse, say, listen, before I start presenting brands, I want you and your spouse on a call. And I want to know what are you guys trying to do with your life? What are you trying to accomplish in your life? And if I could be the person, meaning you guys as the brokers, if you could be the person that opens a door to that opportunity that they themselves, when they're at home at night, thinking about their next step in life, that you know what it is, they're most likely going to be extremely serious. So with this step, you're going to weed out all the nonsense people that we don't need and you don't need to chase. And, and Craig, if I'm going to call you out a little bit, the guy that you've been chasing for a year, you don't need him. Have him call you when he's ready. Get over it. <laughs> Get over it. Unless you feel like you didn't find his solution yet. That would be the other. Maybe you didn't find his solution because you didn't get a chance to get to know him perfectly. No, he's all it. he's all settled on a, a franchise. Um, okay. It's just that his job with what he does said, "Hey, can you give us? We got to get through this project." Well, it lasted all this past summer. He sure. decided a long time ago which franchise. He just was waiting to finish up this project before he goes. So my point was, I stuck with him for a year because of that and and hope and hopefully it's going to finish up here before the end of this year but he's been he's been good all the way and and i imagine everyone here maybe has a scenario of maybe i want you guys to take a thought this isn't something you have to speak out of but make a note right now is who are some people you've spoken with that you feel like you could really get to know a little bit more you felt like maybe it was a little quick and transactional Maybe if you had taken that extra five minutes to just really understand to the core what they're trying to accomplish, write those names down because I really encourage and you calling them and saying, hey, I know we spoke and I want to apologize because I really feel like I didn't get a chance to really get to know what you're trying to do. And I want to understand why you would even buy any franchise. And my job is to just match you. So now, now you would have done the two hardest thing in the whole process, which is really get to know the business and really get to know a person. And now it's going to make matchmaking easy. It's not just presenting a brand. It's I'm calling you because I found something for you because you and I both know we we're on the same page, you and your candidates fair. And then for the business as well, because you know, the business very well, they know that when you call them, you're not, you're going to send them one person. They're going to be excited because they know that you know them very well. So with, with my businesses that I work with, when I onboard a company, a position, usually I ask them the question of, you know, you've been trying to fill this position. You know, you may have most companies that I work with have used recruiting companies in the past. And I ask them for an, a position on average, how many resumes they send you. And they tell me anywhere between 15 to 20 resumes per position, a recruiting company is sending them. For myself, if I'm sending you three resumes, that's my highest number. There's something wrong if by the third person, we haven't found you the right person. Okay. I don't go 15, 20 resumes for a position. I go one or two. And, and we just have an instance right now. We just put up a job offer. Um, we have, uh, I know there's home hardware in Canada. I don't know if there's home hardware in the U S. Um, but it's like, it's just like a home, a mini home Depot. Um, anyways, she wanted a general manager and she was very confused because the first person we sent to her was so perfect. And she's like, I love them. I want to give them a job offer, but I've only met one person. So there's that moment where the owner of the business was very confused. It was like, is this too good to be true? And we had to explain her, well, that's why we spent two weeks getting to know you. And then we went through 55 people, four of them caught our attention for a good interview. And from the four, that was what we felt was the perfect one. Cause we got to know you, the owner as a person, we got to know your business. We got to know the problems you have in your business. That of course, why am I going to waste your time sending you someone that isn't going to be your solution? I took those extra steps. So it's problem and solution. I'm going to the brand and saying, I'm solving your problem. I'm finding you this perfect person for you. And your instances is I'm solving your problem. 
because I'm finding you the ideal person that everything they said in their life personally, what they want to accomplish is a perfect match for you and vice versa. The same thing for the job seeker in my instance and the candidate in your end. And when I'm going to them and I'm telling them, I don't want you just applying for this job. I'll tell them I have multiple jobs for you guys. You have multiple brands. I don't want to introduce you to a brand or I don't want to introduce you to a job that isn't going to be perfect for you. Tell me more about you. And then when I introduce you to something, we know we're not going to waste time. Is that fair? And I get that acknowledgement from that person. So that to me is those extra five minutes, those two steps right there. Yeah. Really cleans up. Can we all kind of agree? I know it kind of sounds like common sense and it isn't this big secret thing, but can we all admit that we don't do it well enough? Yes. Yeah, fair. Fair. Okay, perfect. Now, there's one more element to this. Once in a while, we can't get this perfect. Okay. Once in a while, especially in a one hour meeting with a brand, um, or you can go and pay them a visit and you're really getting to know them, but you really haven't spent so much time with a brand or with a candidate. When you do, I tell my customers all the time, the first person I may send to you may not be perfect. They it might actually, most likely, it won't be the right person. That's totally fine because it's a learning curve. Because in one hour, I can only learn so much. I'm going to send you the first person who I think is the right one for you. But after that meeting, I want to know what you liked about them and what you didn't like about them. And I'm going to make sure the second person that I send to you, it doesn't have your don't likes. And I won't waste your time then. I'm not going to try to convince you with anybody else. I'm you. It's part of the learning. It's okay to mismatch. When you think of, when you take a minute now and then think of who are some people that were very, very excited and you know are serious candidates that you have and you have serious brands. And when you got on a call with them and you introduced them and they did a conversation and all this stuff, but nothing panned out from it, why? What was it? It's okay to ask the candidate. What was it that was missing? That way the next brand I introduce you doesn't have that. Or what was it that was missing? That way the next candidate I introduce to you, they won't have that. That's your learning. And that's more hyper-focusing on the person and on the brand. Okay? It's very important. As a matter of fact, that's the biggest learning curve you're going to get. Is when you take that minute, most people, they call me and they say, Christian, have, we presented someone to you. How did the meeting go? Oh, I was okay. And then they say, okay, I'll send you someone else. But they don't ask me why. They don't pry into the details as to what was it exactly that was missing. That way I don't make the same mistake again by sending you someone else. Fair? So yeah. that's, that's my, my, my third tip for you guys is this. is It's okay to mismatch, but learn from them. Don't make the same mistake twice. I grew up with a manager and he was very, very strict. If I made the same mistake twice, it was going to be a painful night for me. So I learned that always I make the mistake once I learned, I learned why, why did it not work and let me not do it again. Okay. So, um, anyone, if, if someone could volunteer here, has anyone introduced somebody that, you know, is a good candidate, serious, introduced them to a brand, but it didn't pan out and has, you know, could admit, hey, you know what, I haven't, I haven't, I didn't really dive into the root cause as to why. You just kind of accepted it. Have we all done that? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. I have a good yeah. story. It's kind of relevant. Yeah, go ahead. I have a client and in the beginning, you know, they're very high powered kind of people. She's a doctor. They own 30 multi-unit properties. Um, they originally were running property management, but alternatively I showed them something she had asked for relating to a, a secondary business that would be an adjunct property management. And in going through the process, they took off like really great clients. They did all their homework. They set up all the calls quickly. Uh, they got through the entire due diligence in less than three weeks, both brands seven or eight validation calls bottom line she calls me and says we have learned so much through this process and it's helped us to clarify our goals and in the beginning i said what are your goals what's missing blah, blah. well we'd like to one day monty has time i don't but one day i'd like to step away i'm not enjoying being a doctor anymore long story short we, our, we flipped um you know, we realize we don't want a complicated business. We don't want, we're not empire builders. We've already got retirement money. 
that's not what we really want is a very simple business. So anyway, I had to go back to the drawing board, but they were at least able to very easily articulate what they learned through the process. And actually that happens quite often. And so I warned them that up front, you know, you're going to learn a lot in the beginning. You may not, you may think you know what you want, but in talking to three or four franchises at pretty deep level down the road and franchisees, you may find what you thought you wanted isn't what you want when you really think about it. So sometimes it's good for exactly what you just said. We learn from it. Yes. And, and you being, you're the middle person and, and, you, Jane, you seem like a very open person. We've never actually met, I don't believe, but you're very welcoming that you, you make someone comfortable to talk to you. And that's that's the game here, guys. With the nature of my business, I have to make people very comfortable to talk to me. The employer who's in a vulnerable situation, they have to be comfortable. And the employee, the job seeker has to be comfortable to be able to open up and we can learn about them to be able to match make. And that is really your role here is how can you make someone on both sides very comfortable to be able to openly share that, to be able to really feel like you have them in the corner and that you will work hard for them at the end of the day, right? So no, thanks, Jane. That's exactly what we're talking about here because I'm sure all of us here have those scenarios, right? And maybe some of us may have that scenario and not know it because maybe we could, we're too closed off that our home dates aren't comfortable enough to share you know, some people aren't, some people are kind of introverted in a way where if they had one bad experience, they won't tell you, they'll just disappear on you, right? And and that happens, you're smiling, right? Because I feel like that, you, we've all seen that, where it's like, we wonder why someone just goes to us. We had a great conversation, we introduced with someone and then disappeared. Something scared them and it's up to us to be less transactional and really treating someone who's vulnerable and just making them feel comfortable and say, hey, listen, I'm your person to talk to. I'm your person to talk to and let's figure this out together on for both parties. So this, this whole mindset, this mindset is designed to make you talk to less people, which is okay. It's okay. Talking to less people, but that crowd now is a serious crowd and that crowd makes the transaction. Now I can start calling your candidates a client because they'll, because now when you match make correctly, they're going to be like, man, why, why haven't we met three months ago or a year ago or whatever? I, I love this opportunity. That's the scenario that you want. You want to see it when a brand meets their ideal candidate and the ideal candidate meets their ideal brand and you put them together in a room. And when you make that introduction saying, I know you guys will work out. I'm going to let you guys talk because you're so confident that you've known those parties well. We could all agree your odds are going to be a lot higher that they resonate with each other. Fair? Yes. There's, there's there's a people element too, especially you guys probably deal a lot with the owners of businesses, right? For the brand, really, really getting to know that personality, the owner and who they would like to work with. Cause at the end of the day, you know, maybe someone will be joining a brand because of the energy of a person. They say, you know what? I don't quite understand the business, but I love Christian and his energy and I, I could see myself working with them. And that's why I'm going to decide is that, that that scenario could happen, right? This is a people business that we're in. We're not just matching brands together just like i'm not just matching a company with a person i'm actually matching people together the owner of the company will not be working and when you start thinking of it that way you're matching people not opportunity to client your mindset changes completely and makes it a more humane kind of it it makes it it makes it more real it makes it more genuine can we all agree that could possibly help with what we're doing yes so really, that's that's it. I just I wanted uh, the opportunity. I've been going for about thirty eight minutes now. Um, is there anyone before I kind of close off? Is there anyone that would like to share anything about what we just talked about? I've had a great crowd already. I want to thank you for that. So, um, listen. At the end of the day, I just wanted to offer some value. Um, all all I want to ask for is just one thing. This was just a way for me to introduce myself to more franchise brokers. At the end of the day, my business is CPG Recruitment, and we are a franchise in the United States and in Canada. And this was just an, a creative idea that I put together to meet some new people and give them a taste of what we do for a living. And, and now you get a chance to know me, my energy, who I am, and hopefully one day we can we can work together when the time comes. And and we don't have to dive into it on this call, but what I am going to do in the chat right here what I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop in if you could all do me this one favor since I gave you guys all a nice piece of advice I'm gonna just punch in our website 
franchise.com. Okay, this is our website where it's everything about our franchise opportunity. If I could just ask that you guys just click it and just get on it. You don't have to look at it today. Look at it at some point whenever you free up. We all have a busy schedule, but that's the only favor I'd like to ask for for the time that I took today to, to give you guys some value. If it's something that's good for you guys, please call me. I'll even put in my cell phone number and we can start chasing them. So you guys can text me at this number. The number you have right here is exactly my cell phone. So I want to thank you all for coming on this call, at least getting a chance to meet me. And uh, thank you for your time. And thank you, especially Craig and, and Jane, you made this call a lot easier for me, volunteering <laughs> time to, to share your stories, okay? Yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Thank you for offering it, appreciate it. Thank you.